<laughs> anyway, good morning everyone. Thank you for coming again to Nintronics on a very cold morning, but very nice. So, appreciate the effort everyone's made to come here. Uh, as you all know, today is all about uh, name. We've got a whole raft of uh, wonderful equipment here for you to listen to, and Jason's going to take you through a whole range of different upgrade options and show you how you can progress up through the range. And uh, we've got the other systems next door, the Unity range, and, uh, and some more upstairs for you to try as well. So, um, uh, if everyone wants a drink, you know where to go, help yourselves. And um, without further ado, I'll hand over to Jason and uh, let Great. Thanks thanks today go in. Okay, so my name's Jason God. I've worked for Name for the best part of 20 years, and I used to sell it in a store for a 15 years back in Bristol, Radford Hi Fi, which is where people like Paul Stevenson cut his teeth originally, our, our previous MD, uh, and a few other name reps. I think Radford Hi Fi spawned quite a few people into the industry. And um, what I'd like to, to talk about today is the name range. We, we've, for a number of years, we've been focusing on integrated boxes and things like Muso. And that's all very important to our business. But the core of our business is still electronic Lego, yeah. where you, you add components to a system or not. You don't have to. We would like to say that what you have is good enough. You can sit down and enjoy music, but if you want to upgrade your system, you don't have to keep changing the products. Sometimes you do, but it's nice to be able to add things to it, and that adding to the product has purpose. And many years ago, when Julian started the company, he had a crowd of people, probably about 60 people, he was at a sem sem seminar, and he was talking about name, and... Uh, he said, you know, these little boxes you keep adding, they're a bit fussy, but why do you do it? And he said, power supplies, they're important. Speak to any decent audio engineer and they'll tell you that a large percentage of what you listen to is the power supply itself. And if you have a bad power supply connected to a good audio circuit or technology as it is today, <coughs> the system will fail. If the voltage is bad going in, the music suffers. It's a bit like when you could put two star into a Ferrari by mistake it wouldn't work right. So if you put the right one in four or five star, it went like a rocket. If you have poor mains going into a system, i.e. voltage, the same thing happens. It's under par, it introduces noise. You amplify more noise, less signal, that's bad for music. So today I've got a number of upgrades. We can cover most of them. We don't necessarily have to do all of them. Um, I'm going to start with the Super Nate 3, which is our new integrated amp, and add a power supply to it, the high cap. I'd then like to add a power supply to the streamer, which is the NDX2, which is called the XPS2. And then once we've done that, we can add a power amp to the high cap, which is connected to the Super Nate. Then can, we can remove the Super Nate and add a preamplifier. We can add a better power supply to that preamp and add a better preamp, and then finally end up with a better power amp. So only a handful of things to do. And if you get lost, don't worry. Say, can you remind me what we're listening to? I do go over things to try and lock it into your mind. Uh, most of it looks the same on the front. Uh, it's by design. It's all about being a uh, utilitarian product. It creates great sound and one box looks the same, but actually the magic's inside and that's what you're paying your money for. Before we start the demo, we need to talk about streaming. Uh, the NDX2, which is a, a, a fabulous machine, it starts at 5,000 pounds and you can add power supplies and take it up to uh, 9,500 and up to 12,000 if you use the triple five power supply. But before you start streaming music ses successfully, you need to look at what music you're gonna get in. Are you gonna use Tidal? Are you gonna use Kabuz? Incidentally, any of you that may have our streamers, that's online for this product next month. So it's a free download. Subscribe to Cobras <coughs> and you'll find it's twice, three times as good as Tidal. It's fabulous, beautiful. So that's one option, or three options, because actually you could do Spotify. I don't think you're gonna do that though, not in this arena anyway. But actually, streaming for a lot of people has been their new CD player. And streaming to us, when we started to look into streaming, became exciting because we knew there was a fundamental flaw with compact disc players. They lied to us. Like Philips did in 1983, they told us it was perfect sound forever. You could wipe anything on them, wipe it off, and you could play it. Um, and it was perfect sound, but none of it was, because I bet most of you in here said, 
I'm still going to use my record player. That's a perfect sound. And when we came out with our original CDS, Julian Berica said, you know, we're going to have to build a CD player because I can't buy vinyl anymore. Because they started to kill it off because you kept still using your record players. And they said, well, we've got to make this format work. Let's take away vinyl. So we made a CD player sound as musically competent and as enjoyable as a record player. It doesn't sound like vinyl, it's impossible, but it has musical attributes of a, of a record. At times it's got rhythm and is musically involving. So now we're here in this 21st century with a streamer and our CDs. And there's a little bit of irony here in that we're still using the compact disc. We prefer to rip our compact disc onto our core, which does a perfect big rip. It stores it as a perfect package of information, but the good news is when you're streaming back through, there is no error correction, the line part of a CD player. That's all being removed. And so we can say to anyone, if you want to buy a new CD player, don't. You buy a core and you buy a streamer. That's your new CD player. Plus you've got a whole bunch of other things. You can control it with your iPad. You don't get music from it, but it's a posh remote control. You can stream various um, music programs from Tidal, Spotify, Kubuz. You've got internet radio, and some of the stations are really quite good. But for us, it's all about exploiting the compact disc collection you may have already. And some of you may have two, three, four, five thousand plus CDs. Get more from them. You haven't heard them yet until you rip them properly with a core and stream them back through one of our streamers. That's what we believe. And Today is going to use the core and an NDX as a front end and I'll go through all the various upgrades and show you what happens to the system. The hardest part of today, because I love standing up and talking to you of course, that's good fun. Normally without a camera, that's a bit nudgy, <laughs> but that's fine. Curse of the camera. We'll that's fine. <laughs> Something will go wrong. <laughs> um, the music. I, I never know what's going to please anyone, so I've got music that will illustrate differences. <clears throat> So forgive me if it's a piece you don't like. Something will come along you'll hopefully enjoy. Otherwise, I'm probably going to get egged out at the end of the session. But hopefully, it's enjoyable enough. I'll play a track now, let you get used to the room. The speakers we're using are the Focal Scala Evos. £28,000, way too expensive for what we're starting with, but they need to have something commensurate for what we want to end up with, which is ultimately a 252 Supercap 300 NDX and XPS definitely warranted at that point and required for the system. Like 
will be like that, but it's hopefully that was an okay sound. As I say, it's a three and a half thousand pound integrated amp on a twenty eight thousand pound loudspeaker. It's not really what you would partner. Uh, I'm sure if any of you came with a budget of thirty one and a half thousand pounds, they would split it differently for you, mostly on the front end amplifiers and then speakers last. I get uncomfortable saying speakers are last, they're not unimportant in the chain, but there's a great analogy and it came from Julian and Iver many years ago when they were conquering the word about world about hi-fi and everybody thought these were the most important part because that's where the sound came from. So that had to be the biggest uh, improvement area. And they said, well, okay, if you've got the best amp and the best speaker in the world, but the record player is running at the wrong speed, all you're going to do is amplify very well the wrong speed. So it has to be the source first. Having said that, if you get the wrong speaker at the end, you can spoil a very good system at the same time. So it's all about balance. We've established a system, NDX2, £5,000, Supernate 3, £3,500. And to improve this system, you can add things like power amps. You can add a power supply to the source. But what I want to do is add this small box here called a high cap. It stands for high capacity power supply. And it's a dual regulated 24 volt supply, which will supply very high quality, smooth, regulated voltage to the preamplifier stage. And the preamp of any amplifier is the business end, believe it or not. And again, people start saying, but surely power amps need to drive the speakers. But the preamp becomes before the power amp stage, and the power amp can only perform correctly if it's got good preamplification in front of it. So this is why we've always said, if you've got a NAP250 and you've got a pair of speakers the NAP250 can drive, keep exploiting the front end, keep looking at the preamp. You know, go from a NAP250 to a 552 before you go to a 500 power amplifier. So what we'll do is, I'll, I could play that same track if you're happy with that. Because mm -hmm. actually the, a lot of people would put a big orchestra on because it's big and dynamic. Let's listen to subtleties and play the same track, add the high cap and see what it changes in the sound. The, sp the volume will remain the same, we'll try and keep it as constant as we can all the way through and we'll simply add the high cap.
that's all right. It's quite a vast improvement. It decays on the, the notes. Mm -hmm. The vocals were much more focused. And the guitar playing was much more accomplished. It was like the guitar was just <coughs> tuned in slightly better. And you could almost picture the fingers just, just running over the strings rather than just being plucked, not randomly before, but just not quite as sensitively as, we, as that time around. So that's just a, a simple piece of music that can make a difference too. And what we've done there is decoupled the power supply in here, which is also being used to drive the speakers, of course, and has given it its own dedicated supply. And the beauty of this system is it starts to open avenues for you if you want to pursue upgradable hi-fi. Because for some people it's, the, it's, it's wanting to get better music in the home, it's for some it's for actually improving the hi-fi for the sake of a hi-fi because it's a great hobby as well as listening to music at home so we've added we've not changed we've not lost any money and we've improved the system <coughs> that's our lego set going from this big and adding another chunk of the lego set and getting bigger so now what we can do is add a power amp at this stage i think what i would probably do is add a power supply to the streamer and see what influence that has on the sound before we start exploiting power amps and better preamps and then a bigger power, uh, power amp at the end. So I'll change the music and hopefully there's something you <coughs> like there. Okay, this is an interesting one I think. It's called John Taylor's Month Away. King Creosote and John Hopkins.
Still off to one side, and I get an awful lot more from that. I mean, from which box did you enter? Yeah, this one here. Oh, the no, HPS. <clears throat> There's an arrangement going on here, by the way, where we've got all the noise on one side, and every single box here doesn't have a power supply in it. So we've kept what we do brains in brawn. If you can keep it on two stands, all the better. A lot of people thought it was a ploy, especially when we started making our own stands, to make people <laughs> buy more levels. Um, and we used to say, no, 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 I know it's six high, but all you need to do is buy a base and put three on one side and keep three on the other. And it's only living room space that determines whether somebody does that or not, because when they hear the difference, it's colossal. You know, we've gone to the lengths of removing the power supplies from the electronics, and if you can actually put them on a separate table, it keeps all that harmonic distortion down. And basically, power supplies aren't great for audio circuits, but they're essential at the same time. So if you can keep the electromagnetic fields which pour out of transformers from the electronics, it sounds better. If you put it on a separate table, even better isolation. And in actual fact, that upgrade going from the NDX as a one box to an XPS is two upgrades in one because what we do is, and you probably noticed this, I pulled the mains cable away from the back of the unit. So the power supply inside is off. So there's no noise, no transformer running in that product whatsoever. 
the noise is being put into a separate system. I mean, a, a reasonable analogy, I think, is if we jumped in a van now, a big noisy rattly van and drove from here to Manchester, we might hold a conversation. We'd probably have a headache by the time we get there with all this noise coming off the engine. But if we did it in a Jaguar and the engine's double bolted away and it's nice and quiet, you could probably hold a meeting. And imagine your brain's the audio circuit and the power supply is the engine. Keep the engine away, reduce the noise, and you've got a much clearer thought path. And it's similar with electronics. Keep all the noise off the audio tracks and you'll amplify more signal, less noise. Now you've got much better regulation running the audio circuits, but literally removing the power supply and adding a bigger, better one gives you those improvements. And you know, the fascinating thing is everything you hear in this room would be three, four times greater in your own lounge because you know the furniture. You're not sat to, next to someone you don't necessarily know. You know the music and you know your room. So anything you hear here is magnificent, really. It's when you get at home, that's the acid test, really. Again, I keep going back to things that I picked up from Julian, what he would say years ago, and, and he would say that it fa it's fascinating that you can record this stuff, but getting it back is so difficult. You get a Frank Sinatra album, you know, recorded in the late 50s, 60s, and it's magnificent today. It's like it's high res, you know, and... Uh, so it was put there originally on tapes and maybe single mic or a pair of stereo mics, but getting it back and getting it to where it was actually played live and how it sounded originally is so difficult. And that's what we keep striving to do. And it's not just technology that allows you to do that, it's actually having decent power supplies, big power amps to amplify what's come off the, the source itself. So once you've got the source to where you need it to be, you can start to exploit the rest of the system. And now we've really hit the end stops of the Super Nate 3. So to move to the better preamp, we needed a power amp in place. And now what I'd like to do is change the music, but employ a NAC 282 preamplifier. Um, it's, there's a preamp in between called the 202. I think if you had a Super Nate 3, you wouldn't entertain that amplifier. It's not close to a Super 8, but it's just a little bit of a side and up step, not a big enough improvement. You wouldn't thank us for pointing you in the direction of that amplifier. But 282 worth it. It's about 15, 1600 pounds more than a Super 8, but remember you do need a power supply and a power amp to go with it. So again, I'll change the track and we'll see what influence it has. I'm gonna choose a track which isn't brilliant recorded this time because Actually, if I go and listen to my music, I wish everything was perfectly recorded. Probably two thirds isn't, but I love the music. I'm going to play an Elvis Presley song, and I want to see what a better preamp can do, what influence it has to the music, and uh, hopefully we'll get a surprise. So.
technology that was used, the way it was probably thrown together, sadly, 
but we can get more we can get more from what was actually put down by Elvis it sounded more like the king there was much more conviction behind the whole thing better pace it moved along quite nicely so if you've got recordings that aren't great don't not play them because you've got a good high on the recordings not so good you can get more music across because it sorts everything out you know the timing rhythm pace is so important in music and emotional qualities um, there was even proper stop start to the vocal and how he did over the line the backing came in it was much more forceful you could argue maybe slightly brighter we're getting more of what the engineer put down there um, for sure but actually it was a much more fun track you know it's just you know it, it just lifted you if you like the track <laughs> <laughs> so we'll go back to better recordings now but I just wanted to prove the point that you know just because you've got recordings that aren't great doesn't mean you can exploit better music from them as your system grows and gets better they don't get worse you hear more of what the the bad job of the engineer did in the studio but actually the adverse is you actually get more of what the artist intended which is all you can ever achieve from bad recordings in essence the artist shouldn't disappear into the background the better your system gets you will hear more engineer but he'll start to come more forward and be more obvious in what he tried to do okay so we've got our final move which is last but one move sorry I'm going to move to a NAP 300 power amplifier now onto the 282. The 282 is being powered by a SuperCap because our final change will be then from a 282 SuperCap to a 252 SuperCap. So let's see what a bigger, better power amp can do in this system with a better preamp. I would never, never exercise a 300 with a SuperNAC 3 as its front end source uh, preamplifier. So I'll change the track, usual stuff, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. 
what we'll do is we'll change to 252300 from 282 super cap 250 <clears throat> we'll go to 252 super cap 300 so we'll have a whole ampl amplifier lift in performance okay system grows up and all of a sudden we have a speaker that's actually improved all the way through so remember this the speaker stayed constant this gets back to us telling you that source pre-amplifier power amplifier are the most important aspects <clears throat> get a reasonable speaker but exploit the electronics running through them and you'll be surprised at what you can achieve and uh, in most cases you know, there's people that have been using name SBL since they came out in 1985, six-ish, and they've got a NAT 500 and a 552 and an ND555 still running through that speaker because it just got better and better with whatever you threw at it. And it was almost instrumental, actually, the electronics range in us discontinuing a very good speaker called the NBL because people were saying, well, I'm ready for an NBL because I've got SBLs, but now you've bought the 552 preamp out, I think I'll buy that instead because it's a bigger bang for the buck. I'm going to play one last track for you. There's no demo. Um, see what you think. It's quite a good fun track. It's live recording. It's straight off the desk and see what the system can do. It's you, Massacre. from Namibia and Malawi 
There's a train that comes from Zambia and Zimbabwe. There's a train that comes from Angola and Mozambique. From Lesotho, from Botswana, from Swaziland. From all the hinterlands of Southern and Central Africa. This train carries young and old African men who are conscripted to come and work on contract in the gold and mineral mines of Johannesburg and its surrounding metropoli. 16 hours or more a day for almost no pay. Deep, deep, deep down in the belly of the earth when they are digging and drilling for that shiny, mighty, evasive stone or when they dish that mishmash mash food into their iron plates with the iron shovel. Or when they sit in their stinky, funky, filthy, flea-ridden barracks and hostels, they think about the loved ones they may never see again because they might already have been forcibly removed from where they last left them or wantonly murdered in the dead of night by roving and marauding gangs of no particular origin. We are told think about their lands and their herds that were taken away from them with the gun and the bomb and the tear gas and the gatling and the cannon. And when they hear that choo-choo train, a chugging and a pumping and a smoking and a pushing and a pumping, crying and a steaming and a chicken and a wah They always curse and they curse the cold train the coal train that brought them to Johannesburg.
Thanks for your time. Thanks for listening to me go on, and um, hopefully you've heard some nice, interesting upgrades here. The acid test is getting a proper dome. Trying to try and get home, maybe it's not essential, but it will always sound better when you finally get something at home. Um, but it's really nice to get that message back out to you that multiple boxes still are the ultimate way to get proper high fidelity in the home. We do some fantastic. I hate to call them compromises. All in ones. They're wonderful. But if you really want to get the best from your music, it has to be through multiple boxes. There's no other way to do it. You know, uh, you can try and listen, you can add power amps to all-in-ones and they get better, but then it stops. So treat yourself to something that can really exploit the music you love. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Great demo, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.